I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth to you today. Praise God. Now today's Friday. Hey, listen, listen, listen. I told you something yesterday and I'll repeat it today. There are new giants rising and they are rising by God. They're rising because they have opened their hearts to receive. They have yearned for the voice of God. They are not the usual people you think. They are not coming from the usual places that you know. These are people whom God himself has chosen. And the season for their rising has come. They are rising because they have received the word of God. And they are running by his word. And I pray that the Lord will find you. That you will not put a limitation to yourself. There's so much God wants to do with your life. But first, he wants to clear those limitations, those things that block you from receiving his word freely. Open your heart and see what God is going to do with your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Praise God. Can we call for that daily bread? Open your heart and release your faith right now. Just as simple as that is. Release your faith. Release your faith in what? In what Jesus said. Give us this day our daily bread. He said it. It's written in the scriptures because he said it. You're not saying it because it is written in the scriptures. You're saying it because Jesus actually said it. Praise God. And I'm here to confirm that to you that he said it. Because he told me to tell you to ask just like it is written in the scriptures. If you are ready to receive, join me right now and say, Father, I demand today my daily bread. And I receive all of it from you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know what you need today. I just heard the Lord say, tell them to be specific. What do you want today? Today, today. What is that thing you need to close up today? Mention it. Call it as your daily bread. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say, Lord, I receive it from you right now. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Woo! We're in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 6. Nothing else matters in life but this one thing. Faith that walks by love. Now, when he says faith that walks by love, don't get yourself confused. He is talking about faith that walks by God. Because God is love. So how does faith walk by God? Faith that comes from the mouth of God. And that's what faith is. Faith is the voice of God. The voice of God produces the word of God. And that's what faith is. So Jesus said, have faith in God. What's he talking about? Turn your heart and receive faith from God. So we receive faith. We don't have faith in ourselves. We receive faith. Faith comes by hearing. So faith comes to you. And how does faith come? When God speaks, faith comes and then you receive it and apply it. Because when faith comes, the next thing is your response to faith. Now that's what's going to make the faith to be effective. The fact that faith has come doesn't mean faith will be effective. Faith is only effective when you respond to it. Now how do you respond to it? By your actions. See that? So when, when, when James said, faith without the works is dead, meaning the word of God can eventually become dead. 
How? When you don't respond by your works. What works? Works. You know, say, oh, life of faith without works is dead. So uh, when, you, when you say you're believing God for money, go and look for job because that is the works. No, 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 no. If you can look for job and the job can give you the kind of money you're looking for, then you don't need faith. You don't need faith, I'm telling you the truth. Faith first understands and examines the word that have come. See that now? Faith, your response when faith comes, is to examine and understand what God has said. Then after that, you take an action based on what you understand from what God has said. I'll give you an example. Here's Jacob going to his uncle Laban's house. And he got tired on the way. And he decided to sleep. And he got a stone for a pillow and he slept. Now, while he slept, he had a dream. And in that dream, he saw heavens open and a ladder was dropped from heaven, right, right to where his pillow, his head was. And he saw angels ascending and descending. And then he heard a voice calling his name, introducing himself. I am the God of your father, Abraham. And Isaac, now you have a dream and you are hearing a voice from, in that dream, you know that you were interacting with heaven. And a voice came from heaven. You didn't see a man's face. A voice came from heaven and is calling your grandfather and your father. And he's saying to you, look, I will be with you and I will bring to pass that which I have promised your grandfather. You know he's talking to you. And then he says, I will never leave you until I bring to pass all that I have spoken concerning you. Now, Jacob got up and realized there was no ladder. There was no angel. He looked up. Everything was normal. The trees were all in place. Then he realized it was a dream. But then he began to analyze the dream. No, this is not a normal dream. I heard my name in that dream. My grandfather was called in that dream. My father's name was called in that dream. And then the voice said, he will be with me. And he said, he is God. This is not a normal dream. So what did he do? I want you to watch now. He took stones and set it up as a pillar. Now he did that for marking. So he will remember that place. He took stones and set it up as a pillar. And the Bible says he built with that, those stones, he built an altar. And then he made a vow to God. Why did he make a vow? He was responding to that voice that he heard intelligently. The voice said, I will be with you and I will bring you back to your father's house. And this and this and this is what I'm going to do with you. So he made that pillar with stones and said, Lord, you that have spoken to me, if you will be with me just like you have said, and bring me back. Then you see this place I have set up as a stone. I will call it the house of God. Now this man had nothing with him but his staff. And then he said, of all, because God has said, I will bless you. He understood what that word meant. You know, sometimes people say, you know, blessing is not physical, blessing is spiritual things. No, sir. No, sir. Blessing is physical. When you are blessed physically to show. So he said, of 
all that you will give me. God didn't tell him, I'll give you goats, I'll give you... Say. No. He said, I will bless you. And he says, of all that you will give me, I vow that I will give a tenth. I will give a tithe of all. He made a covenant with God. That was what? His action. That was his response to faith that came to him, even though it came in a dream. Now, the moment he took that action, what happened? A covenant was set. Now, some of you don't know that we still make covenants with God today. And that was Jacob's covenant. You too can make a covenant with God. How do you make covenant with God? By responding to faith. By responding to faith. You see, now, please be careful that people who have not had real dealings with God, that they don't lead you astray. Any man who walks practically with God, there are certain things he would never say. Never. Because once you get to understand God, there are certain things you'll be careful to say or do. So you hear sometimes people come say, eh, 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 sowing seed will never make you blessed. Be careful. Be careful. Because the one who's sowing seed, you don't know what he has heard. The one who went to empty his bank account and did something with it, you don't know what he has heard. You don't. So don't criticize him. You don't know what he has heard. And let me tell you the truth, he's not functioning in your world system. What is he responding to? Faith that works by love. So God spoke those words to Jacob in love. Jacob received it and then he acted. He did something physical. Listen, when it comes to faith, there must be a physical response. Why must there be a physical response? I'll tell you why. See, all the angels, I call it by Subredi Kasayaka. Ha. Lord help us. Now, I want you to listen to me. Jacob woke up from a dream and took time to reflect on everything that had transpired in that dream. And from there, he began to gather stones. And there were angels there. And they were watching this man and wondering, why is he gathering stones? finished gathering the stones and then they had him make this pronouncement he said these two things you must do number one your physical action number two the words see because your words will explain the action your action can be anything now sometimes people may not even understand you Someone can wake up from a dream and get a bottle of anointing oil and he begins to pour in specific places. And someone is wondering, why pour oil? Why? Now, you that is pouring the oil, don't think the power is in the oil. No, it's not. It's not. Neither was the power in those stones. No, it wasn't. But once he began to gather those stones, the angels were wondering, why is this man gathering stones? Then they heard him speak, say, Lord, if you will be with me like you have said. Okay, this man has heard the voice of God. 
Now they hear him referring to what God has said. So this man have heard the voice of God. So I make this covenant with you that this place shall be your house. And of all that you give me, I will give a tithe. Aha. Uh -huh. He's heard the voice of God. Now the angels will begin to deal with him accordingly. Because it is written in the script. So, so this man gets up and begins to pour oil. And the angels are looking at it. Why is he pouring the oil? Now it can be anything. Just using that as an example. Something you can relate with. Why is he pouring the oil? Then he began to speak. I said, Lord, just like you said to me, you have given me this for my possession. I make a covenant. You, you see, I claim, I claim I receive, I claim I receive. What are you bringing? What physical action have you put in? You know, I told you before, Abraham, when he met Melchizedek, he didn't just see Melchizedek and say, oh, I have to give this man a gift. Okay, let me give a tithe. No, he didn't know anything about tithes. It was Melchizedek that taught him how to respond to that visitation. It was Melchizedek that told him, Abraham, this is what you should do. Take a tenth of everything and bring it. And he did that. Did Melchizedek take it away? No, he didn't. He told Abraham exactly what to do with them. Oh, when you give your tithe to God, does God take it? Don't be silly. He will tell you what to do with it. He will tell you what to do with it. Just like he told Abraham. Just like he, gave, he told Jacob. He will tell you what to do with it. But the angels heard him. They said, this man, mark him for the blessing. And so you remember when he was in Laban's house and Laban was cheating him. This guy walked in Laban's house for 14 years without pay. 14 years. Count it. 14 years without pay. And then after 14, he was without pay because he was working for wife. You understand what I'm saying? He was working to pay the bride price of his wives. No, eventually two wives. He was working to pay their bride price. Now, after that 14 years, God didn't let him go. Laban didn't let him go. He said, okay. And then now they now agreed to a sharing arrangement. Even in that Laban wanted to cheat him. Laban kept changing the rules. Then an angel appeared to him and says, I am the God of Bethel, where you made a vow. What does that tell you? When he made that vow, God heard and took him seriously. Now God too is responding to him. You see, love, faith, faith that works by love. So out of love, those words came to Jacob. Jacob received it and he responded. How did he respond? He responded in love also, see? So he accepted the word. He spoke the same words to God. If you will bless me, this is what I will do. And God showed up again and said, I am the God of better where you made a vow. Oh yeah. He said, now this is what is going to happen. When it's time for these animals to meet, I will open your eyes to see. What you see, you mention. And that's exactly what's going to happen. And that's how Jacob became rich in six years. He became wealthy in six years. Don't tell me God doesn't know how to bless you. Even in the harshest economy, God can make you wealthy. He doesn't need the government to make rules for you. He doesn't need to make you know someone in government. He can make you wealthy. All that matters is those words that comes out of his mouth to you. Faith that works by love. My time is up. I pray for you, Lord. Please take out every limit, 
everything that are forming limitation to these ones listening to me from hearing your voice. Let it be taken out. Let them hear your voice clearly. And give them, Lord, give them the grace to respond right. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I bless this weekend. Oh, you will hear the voice of God and you will know what to do. In Jesus' name. Amen. Have the best weekend ever. I'll see you on Monday. Bye.